obviously, you know, obviously disappointed in uh, last weekend's game, three point uh, slugfest, I guess, as it is uh, with those guys every year. Um, but when I look at the back of the wall and I look at our kids' attitude, their effort, and, and the toughness they played with, uh, you know, you never question that of our guys. They played their tails off to the end, you know, on the road, which is never easy to go on the road. Um, you know, we don't do everything perfect as coaches or players, and, and uh, we, all, we all make mistakes at times. And, and those are some of the costly things, whether it's a penalty or just a, uh, you know, an error in what to do and how to do it. Um, and that's why we teach, that's why we coach. Um, it's not going to be perfect. Uh, it's not at any level. Uh, pop water to, to the NFL. Uh, but, uh, you know, again, the biggest thing is, are they giving you everything they got? Our kids are playing hard. They care, you know. Are they disappointed? No doubt about it. You know, I've been a lot. I've been on a lot of team buses, and I'll share this with you. I've been on a lot of team buses where, um, you know, through the years, you, you, you know, you get, you know, you're going, you know, you come out of the locker room, jump on the bus, and you know, you're hearing some talk in the, in the, in the back of the bus, you know, um, and you're kind of like, as a head coach or a defense coordinator, you're kind of like, shut up back there. But you know what? I don't know if I, you know, I was on the offensive bus. You know, I'm talking the entire time. Uh, just silent, so it hurts. And I think when it hurts, that's when you know you guys care. Um, and you know the same thing was on the defense bus. So um, you know that's a, that's a great thing I think um, because it hurts for everybody. It's not it's not fun, but uh, you know we can't uh, sit here and worry about it. Um, again, they're always they're always tough when they're, the closer they are, the tougher they are because you know you're actually one play away. And we had a lot of one plays on offense, defense, and special teams. When you think about how it could have changed the game just on a positive note, Stalker makes a great play at the end of the half. He's going to take that to the house. And that's just one of the positive things, I guess, and you can say it's a positive negative. Positive, he got his hands on the ball. Negative, that he uh, didn't pull it down. He's got great hands, too. Um, but uh, so there's a lot of positives to come back from. we got to learn from our mistakes and, uh, and, and move on to Central Florida. Uh, with, you know, top 15 football team with the Heisman Trophy candidate for real. Um, that will be the second one we played this season. Kenzie Milton is a, is a football player. He's got a quick release, makes good decisions. The tempo is going to be going. Um, they're, they're, they're special there. And then Pat uh, Jasinski, uh, their middle linebacker, is a football player, uh, kind of like our quick Virginia. He's got a bunch of show for them. So uh, 58 and 56 of those two Mike linebackers, I think, are always worth keeping an eye on in, in the game. So with that, I'll open it up for questions. I'm sure you got a bunch. After watching the film, what did you see on those two touchdown passes that UNC got on you where those guys were? It looked like they were pretty. Pretty open. Were those more physical or mental errors by your defense? Well, you know, it's, it's uh, you know, I'm trying to think. Of, I know one of them I can think of. You're talking none. Uh, yeah, there was one that was in One a was a T-shirt, which you know, we talked about. Yeah, I think I mentioned the word T-shirt to you guys on Thursday. Did you guys remember that? You probably know what is T-shirt. T-shirt is what we saw, so we weren't surprised by it. Um, but you would think we were. It's just a, you know, you get in the game and things happen like this. And we'll practice the T-shirt. T-shirt is when there's maybe two receivers each side, and they run whatever, usually it's a, what we call a smash seven over there, and they send the tailback up the, up the middle. Um, you know, we, we try to run one, you know, which we run them, and you know, they grab us around the waist, and you know, we, we weren't in position to, to, to make a play on the ball. And it's something we work with, we watched 100. We watched tape from three years ago, how many T-shoots they got. Um, but uh, that's the one I can think of, and then the other one, um, They made it 35-28. It was uh, to, oh, to, uh, to Brown on the on the little switch route. Um, again, just you know, that was more just physical, really. Uh, you know, we got we got to press it up, and we got to get on the guy. We need to get on him, and you know, um, something just you know, probably more physical. So you can say the physical and you know, mental. I mean, we always talk about physical and mental. They're both you know, mentally. If you didn't get on the right guy and didn't get on him fast enough, it's a little bit of both. How do you address the penalty? We do the same thing. We got referees, you know. Every every team meeting, you know, obviously, uh, I guess Wednesday and Thursday, I start off the TV and we talk about yesterday's practice, where we are, what we need to do today. Hey, let's look at a review of what we did. So I put it up there on a piece of paper. Boom, stick it up there every day. It's got offense penalties, defense penalties, you know, the period, you know, who it was on, their name was up there. And again, we've done that for years, and you know, uh, we you know we've been on one of the least penalized uh, teams. We've had way too many on special teams. You know, uncharacteristic of, of 
pit bull team, to be honest with you. And it's guys trying to make plays and guys uh, just get anxious to go do it. And you just got to relax. Um, you know, we got two illegal shifts offensively. I think there's only two penalties we had on offense. Uh, and, uh, you know, we don't penalty, you know, we don't, you know, I'm not going to run them. I'm not going to make them do up downs for penalty. You know, they understand how it hurts. And it hurts worse in the second half. That hurts worse when you got a 25 yard run. And you know, say you got a first and ten, you change the field, and all of a sudden now you're backed up again. Go back further, you know, go, go deeper into the end zone. Um, you know, get into that coming out situation. So they know, um, and it hurts. And they're not trying to do it. Uh, you know, you know, I think it's something. You know, everybody's got penalties. I mean, again, I think we only had five, so not like there was maybe I think five. And you know, one of them was a kickoff. You know, kickoff out of bounds, which you know, Kessman kicked the ball. So you know, you can throw that one out. And, and the same play, had, you know, Chase Pine was a little bit off sides. He thought he had to change something a little bit on that pound. But uh, those, those two I'm not worried about. I'm not worried about a personal foul. I'm worried about the illegal shifts, which are happening both on, and it's something we call it football. You know, trying to speed these games up. Well, uh, you know, by the time you get off the sideline, you get on the field, that 25 second clock on those first possession plays uh, with some of the shifting and just getting lined up. And usually it's a guy that's got the furthest distance to go from the sideline. So we got to clean that up. We've known that. Uh, but those are ones that have hurt us. And it's usually a young guy that's, you know, not getting set, a freshman. Um, so those are things that uh, you got to live with and, and try to correct. Pat, are there mistakes that you see on the field during the week carrying over into the games? No, not really. <laughs> not really. You, you wish it would. Uh, we covered a T-shoot every, every time we, uh, we saw it. It's just, it's, a, it's an arrangement of different things. I mean, like I said, you know, let's just look at defensively. I mean, there's just little things. Each play, you guys can put the tape on and, and point it out. We call third down and 17. We call, you know, cover two man underneath. And, you know, my man Theron Coleman is in perfect coverage. Um, Dane Jackson's in perfect coverage. And then the other corners just plays it different than the other two guys. It's like, you know, but he didn't do that in practice. Um, but, you know, things happen during the game. And, um, you know, uh, you, you've got to correct it. But it's one guy or two guys a play. Where the other guys are playing really good, you're like, God, we get all 11 playing. That's you know, that's coming together um, and, and doing it right and having focus for 60 minutes. You know, each play six seconds. Okay, you get a break off six seconds again, and we got to have focus. So, and again, perfect alignments. I'll throw that one out to you. You know, some of these tempos we're going to see as fast as tempos you're going to see in the next two weeks. Uh, but Central Florida is going to snap the ball. Shoot. Between eight and you know eight and twelve seconds, a lot of times. Period. It's going to be you guys. You know, might as well keep your cameras on. Don't shut them off. Uh, you know, don't blink. You, know, you might miss a play, uh, but it'll be as fast as you've seen. It'll be it'll be lightning fast. Uh, but our guys got to get the call on the sideline and get back up and see their you know see the formation, identify formation, and that's why they're scoring so many points because it's going like this. Um, we got to get aligned perfectly. And again, our guys are in generally the right spot. Um, when we talk about perfect alignments, and I'm talking this far, that far is a big deal. You know, whether it's a safety alignment on the number two, whether it's a linebacker who thinks he's in a 30, he should be in a 10. I mean, it's this far away. And, and those are all details that, you know, you have to clean up. So there's some major things like that cover two I'm telling you about. And, uh, but, uh, you know, there's some minor things that are just like tiny little things. You know, we brought a couple motions and we get, you know, we see about as much motion out of our offense and practice and camp and spring ball that we shouldn't have any of those, those things, but, you know, um, we, we had a couple out there that hurt you. Talk about losing focus and cleaning up details. Are you surprised with all the seniors on defense and you have to talk about that stuff still? Not really. A lot of times it's not the seniors um, that are having problems. Every once in a while it pops up, but, you know, no, it doesn't surprise me at all. If you're in the game of football long enough, that, that happens. And like I told the defense last night, you know, one week, you know, Jerry DePaul is asking if you're the greatest defense ever in Penn. Or since you've been here, and then the next week it's like, you know, you got to come back. And, you know, the room sometimes goes lopsided. The offense plays good enough, the defense doesn't. And then also the next week the offense doesn't play good enough, the defense plays your tails off. So it's all, you know, like I said, you evaluate things at the end of the year, and it does not surprise me. Things happen during the game. There, it is moving fast out there. Um, and uh, you've got to think fast. You've got to be locked in. Not, again, I think our kids are locked in, but you're going to have mistakes. I've never been in a game where you're not going to have mistakes. But again, one less mistake and we win the football game. That's all it takes is one. You know, it's like I told defense, we didn't ask you to shut them out. Okay, there's not going to be a shutout. Okay, there's not very many shutouts in college football anymore. So you know, we didn't expect you to score 60. Didn't didn't give you a time on you know as far as a score based on the uh, uh, 
you know, the keys to what we have to do to, to win this football game. Um, but all you need is one, you know, just one play. Just one play. Make one more than you did, because uh, it's not going to be perfect. Stop that, you know, that switch route you're talking about, you know, um, you know, stop the tee shoot like we did all week in practice. Stop those little things. It's just one of those plays. Intercept it, take it to the house. Um, you know, whatever it may be, make the one more play and you win the football game. So don't, you know, don't have an illegal shift when we get a 25 yard. Who knows what that turns into? But probably one less series for them. Just don't, you know, just don't fumble a kickoff return and don't give them a short field to score again. We just take that one away. So, so there's, you know, there's so many. I mean, everybody's got a piece of it, coaches and players. That's how it is. So. This uh, defense had a, you know, came into the season with a fair deal of high praise. Um, through these first four games here, what, what have you noticed in the biggest, uh, you know, some of the biggest struggles and shortcomings have dealt with it? And you know, did they met your expectations? You know, nobody's going to meet expectations, but, you know, you're talking preseason as opposed to, postseason to real stuff that is in season and weekly. I mean, we look at where you are weekly. And like I said, nobody cares what you did against Georgia Tech in the first half. Nobody cares. And you know what? This week, the only thing I care about is what you do against such I'm not looking backwards. All you care about is right now. Right here, right now, where are you? Um, and again, you're evaluated weekly, not evaluated at the end of the season, as we mentioned before. Uh, you're evaluated weekly and you know, individually and, and as a unit. And uh, am I surprised? No, I've seen it. I mean, it's college football, it's, it's, it's teenagers, um, it's, it's, it's coaching, it's, it's everything. How will you, uh, it seem like U.S. You got any questions about Central Florida? I, 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 I got, think they've won 16 in a row, Jim. Go ahead. I'm going to mention Central Florida right Good. now. How will you simulate uh, their tempo in practice? It's a great question. I'm getting ready to walk into a meeting. Everybody's been, as soon as we walk out of here, you know, there's, you know, we've done a bunch of different ways. Uh, there's, you know, different ways to, to skin the cat, but, uh, you know, number one, you know, and it's every week. I mean, you say, how do you simulate it? You know, our, our scout team will probably have wristbands. We're going to try to bang, 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 bang. You know, it's not going to look like them, just like Georgia Tech's offense didn't look like it. Um, but, you know, every week that's, you know, probably the first thing we look at before we watch it down is, like, you know, before you get into really game plan. Right now our coaches are all in different rooms putting the pieces together and then come together and say, okay, you know, how are we playing them? Who are we playing? What package have we got going on? You know, they, these guys, are, they, they limit you to really doing much pressure-wise because you don't have time to even communicate. I mean, the reason they go fast is they want to keep you in your four down and, and they want to keep you uh, from doing anything but that. Okay, so they, you know, they want to they block a bunch of statues. So you're kind of, you're handcuffed as far as what you do. You do too much, you're going to get, you're going to get whacked and get hit for a big play. So you have to keep it base. I mean, you're playing pretty much the same defense every down. Dad, you but Alan, what was it? I went off on that, but uh, did I answer your question? Yes, you did. You seemed like you were making a lot of substitutions on defense throughout the game. It still seemed like um, you had Briggs go down with what looked like it could be a cramp. It's going to be, I think, 91 or 92 down there this Saturday. Are you – that with combined the tempo, are you expecting to need the whole too deep on defense to be able to play mm -hmm. you know, a, a good amount of time? Yeah, we're always trying to sub. Um, and, you know, a couple weeks ago when I got a penalty, that's what we're trying to do is sub, even if we don't need to sub. You know, it just slows things down a little bit. We're going to try to get this. When they do this, and I thought the officiating crew did a heck of a job of, of that. And obviously, I emphasized before the game with them, and they did a terrific job uh, with putting our arms out, staying in front of the quarterback to give us a chance to substitute. Um, and, you know, that was, uh, that was good to see. Uh, but we want to sub as much as we can sub. We got two deep guys that we think, you know, we got the guys that we think can go in there. And <coughs> excuse me. Uh, we're going to continue to do that. You know, Dennis, you know, cramped up. We didn't get to sub him. Uh, Phil Campbell did make the trip last week. I don't know if anybody noticed it. What did injury, Jerry? Uh, but he was sick. Um, you know, I didn't realize he was a little sick on Tuesday, a little sick on Wednesday, and then Thursday night it kicked in. But uh, so we, you know, we were down one guy. And he's you know back yesterday, feeling good, smiling. Uh, so it's, it's uh, it'll be good to have him back. And, you know, he didn't practice all week, so we lost a not only guy rep, and Bryson did a nice job moving over with zero reps uh, at that boundary safety spot. Bryson Gardner. And considering you guys have had trouble sort of getting the ball down the field vertically, the running game's been really effective. Does that make it maybe even more impressive because the teams are sort of at the line and you guys are still being able to the ball? It does. You know, I think you know, offensively we've done a good job. You know, I think I think they were uh, mixing things up, running pass last week uh, pretty good. Um, I think, uh, you know, we've been running the ball effectively. I mean, we rushed for more yards. I mean, you sit there and you, you look at some of the stuff we put on the screen last night when you, you know, outrush a team. And, you know, we rushed for over 200 yards and we rushed for more than they do. And you're still, you know, slapping yourself in the face like you still 
want more, it ain't good enough. You know, over 100 yards rushing on defense is not good enough. Uh, it's kind of the standard. Maybe the standards are all changing. These offenses are whacked out, but uh, uh, they do a nice job. But, you know, I think. Uh, is that the key? Is that the key against the board if you kind of just keep them off? Yeah, but you know, then I think you, you know, you, we don't want to do is handcuff our offense to the point where, hey, we'll run it three downs in a row, see if we can heat up the clock, and, and don't run out of bounds. You know, nobody wants to coach that way, nobody wants to play that way offensively. I mean, Boston used to like that, that's all they used to do. Uh, but nobody, we, we got to be open up, we got to go, and we got to make plays. And, and I don't want to handcuff, handcuff anybody. Uh, we need to, you know, we need to make plays down the field. And Tace here did a great job making some plays. I mean, some, you know, so those are some big time catches. We got to get more of that, and we got to get some more guys involved. Uh, what do you guys have to do to sustain the good things you've done in the first half offensively in the last couple of games, and carry that over and get a score right away? Um, you mean you talk first half, to second half? Yeah. Um, you know, that's a, 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 a magic question right there. Um, you know, the first thing we do is give ourselves a chance to field position. Um, you know, and it starts with special teams, it starts with offense and defense. I mean, it gets, it's really all three phases, but. I mean, the second half, the last two weeks, we're sitting in the, you know, really last three weeks. You know, we lose a field position in the second half, and we win it in the first half, and we lose it in the second half. I think we lost, you know, field position by 117 yards, and we look at that, but it was all in the second half. I mean, I think our average field position in the second half, does anybody know it? Anybody? You guys look at the stats? Did DJ give you a stats book? What do you guys do? Oh, there's so much information in there. It's, it, you know, we have a time the ball. I think they had it on the 36. We had it on the 18-yard line. I mean, no offense likes that. You know, you look at where they had the ball. Our offense never had the ball in a P and 10 across the 50, okay? And our offense had it in the 18, and, and, and their offense had it twice on our side of the field, twice. You know, they had it the, P, the P whatever, the P37. They had it on the Pittsburgh 37. And again, 10 points. Just don't give them the, the short drive. That's 10 points. I know they beat us by three. So those are all little factors that we talk about all those things, you know. Uh, we got to get better punts. We got to get better kickoff returns. Uh, we can't have penalties on punt return. You know, we had two of them. You know, we have a nice return in, in uh, punt safe. You know, we got someone throw someone down, which is uncharacteristic. Uh, and it's just like, you know, we, you know, we just, you know, boom. You know, stab ourselves in the heart. We can't do it. Until you fix that, you're going to have the same problems. Field position could be a problem. Your defense giving up too many first dodge, too, right? No question about it. I mean, it's all, everything. I mean, it's all, like I said, it's offense, defense, it's, it's all combined. Pat, when, you know, talking about field position, how do you, I guess, do you, are you seeing from Kirk in practice something better than what he's put out there in the game? And how do you go about getting them that out of him? You know, I think he's just got to, you know, refocus in on what he, when he can punt the ball. You guys probably see it in practice. Um, but uh, he's just got to, you know, get in the zone. I think he's thinking too much. And again, it's a, it's a you know, young putter. You know, young putter is trying to work through the good and the bad. Um, you, know, you know, I'm happy he's caught the dig snaps and, and, you know, I mean, don't wish for too much, you know, but I'm just glad and happy he, he's caught the dang things. Have you seen more of your uh, five defensive back look against Carolina? I suspect except for Florida and Syracuse next, we're going to see more of that. More of what now? Your five defensive back uh, yeah. set out there. How How is that developing and, you know, what do you expect? Not really. I mean, well, I think we got who our guys are. I mean, you know, we know who they are as long as they're healthy and, and ready to go. Uh, we know who those guys are. And there's guys, you know, there's backups that will be in there at times. Like I said, Darren Coleman came in and did a heck of a job uh, for a few plays that he was in. Um, you know, we hope we get that, you know, we'd like to see that every day in practice at everybody. But, you know, practice is when we get an opportunity to do it. I, you know, I like where it is. Um, again, it's just details. You know, we, you know, we put some decent pressure. The quarterback got a couple hits. Um, but we got to get some coverage sacks, too. Expect you're going to have to rely on that more because of the next two offenses you're going to see. Um, you know, if you do go to that, you know, usually when we get into that five DBs, you know, what down is it? Usually third. Usually third down. Um, you start going in some of that first and second down, you know, you won't have to worry about third down. You'll hit their head on the goalpost, running the ball down your throat. This team likes to run the ball. They're good at running the football, um, and, uh, and they're, they're fast into it. So switching personnel really isn't an option. Sometimes third down will give you a chance to, to change personnel. But when they sub, we're going to try to sub, and we'll get our guys out there. But, you know, um, you know, the substitution is the key and be able to stop the run out of a, a front, you know. That, that R3 down stuff is, is really for pass.
So if you get into that from third down or on first or second down, um, you know, we've got to stop the run, period. I mean, we didn't do that last week to win a football game. You know, I know if you've said that for three years here, you guys probably going, yeah. Um, but, you know, for some of these zone teams, we have not stopped them like we need to. Anything final? How, how far would Tipton have run if he had picked up that fumble? Longer than you would have. <laughs> well, that's not saying much. And I, you know, he may take it to the house. Pat, you told us a lot preseason now how much you like the leadership on this team. Has that been up to your expectations so far, especially bracing yourselves for the stretch that's coming up after an up and down start? No doubt. I mean, we're, we're, you know, the guys we have in this front row here, you know, our, our, our Eagle Council, uh, some sharp guys. I mean, Des brings them off today. I mean, the greatest guys in the world. We love these guys. Uh, we got great leadership. Like I said, I think the leadership starts with, you know, just the way we, you know, we acted on the airplane and the bus. I mean, the guys are hurt uh, after losses and they're happy after wins. Uh, and sometimes they're not even happy after wins, you know, uh, because they're so locked into what they want to do. They want perfection. Coaches want perfection, and and uh, you're never going to get it. But you know, you know, you need to be excited after wins and and after losses. You should be some disappointed. If there's not, then there's something wrong with your heart. You was talking, and I love our leadership. Craig, we'll give you the last one here. You got one. You had talked about it in the Carolina game, you had about protecting your own signals and making sure that they weren't the only your guys. When you look back at that game, how do you feel like that one? I don't know. Maybe you got to ask them. I don't know. I mean, you try to protect them. Who knows? I saw, uh, I guess maybe it's FAU's got this big, looks like a big black door that they're trying to prevent people from seeing. Maybe we got to come up with that. Thing that you know, we have to have you guys get you a sideline pass, come down, start to shield some stuff on the other sides. Um, but, you know, you can only protect it so much. If you protect it too much, then, you, you know, and maybe that happened a couple of times where you cut off the safety and he can't see the call and then all of a sudden, you know, he doesn't get it. You know, uh, I know someone thought, you know, at one point we might have been in punt safe when we were in defense. Uh, but, uh, I mean, so you can screen them off, but, you know, you can't screen them off from our kids either. Coach, thank you very much. I got Thank it. you all.